action, platforming, plenty of hidden collectibles, challenges, and cool suit power-ups. Smelter fits exactly in the 16-bit Mega Man X shaped hole that I never even knew was missing in my heart. Smelter is a strategy action platformer with bits of tower defense sprinkled into the mix. Following in plenty of classic 16-bit action platformers footsteps, Smelter is relatively light on story but focuses heavily on tight controls, fun platforming, some really difficult challenges, and also throws in some tower defense aspects to keep things a little different and fresh. Let's just get this out of the way right now. Mega Man X has got to be one of my favorite action platforming games of all time. I love the power-ups, the difficulty, the discovery of finding all the upgrades and figuring out which bosses to take on in which order. It was just the right mix of difficult gameplay and encounters, exploration in each level trying to find all the secret rooms and items, and such an amazing feeling of growing more powerful right up until the end. Smelter checks all these boxes and really tugs on my nostalgic heartstrings in a very good way. Everything from the look, the animations, the abilities, the music, and lots of hidden secrets just really make me feel like I'm playing another game in the Mega Man X series, and that is a great thing. I mean, come on, look at this weapon type. If that doesn't scream Mega Man, I don't know what would. Melter, for the most part, follows in the footsteps of all classic 16-bit action platformer games that came before it. The bulk of the game consists of you making your way through 2D side-scrolling stages where you will run, dash, jump, climb walls, and fight enemies. The game is broken into three main regions, each of which you'll gain a new base power or weapon type. These include things like a rock fist for close range heavy hitting, an electric whip style attack for mid range and good at crowd control, and a long range hand cannon that's great for hitting enemies at a distance. Not only does your attack change with each of these powers, but all your abilities do as well. The rock power gives you the ability to perform a really useful double jump and encase your body in a heavy rock armor that can't be blown around by high winds. The cannon lets you sprout electric wings and glide over long distances, as well as lets you go invulnerable for a very short period of time. And then the electric whip lets you disappear while dashing, passing through obstacles and enemies as you go. Each power has a very unique feeling and makes combat feel interesting as you'll learn which powers work better against different types of enemies. Smelter also gives you two other special abilities to use throughout your journey. Occasionally, after defeating an enemy, it will not disappear right away, but rather float in front of you with a green glow around them. This lets you know that they can be smelted, and pressing a button shoots Smelter's ghostly green hand out to them to absorb their power and heal part of your HP. As you fight, you also build up a meter that when maxed out can unleash a powerful slash attack from Smelter that one-shots most minor enemies, which is really useful when you're cornered. There are many hidden rooms in each stage that will require you to switch back and forth between your different powers. This allows you to make your way through each stage finding all the different collectibles. However, the first time you play through a stage, you can only use the main power associated with that stage, meaning you'll have to replay some levels to find all the rest of the collectibles. Thankfully, in the overworld, you can see how many of the collectibles in each stage you've already gathered, so you can easily tell if you've got them yet or not without having to run through the stage blindly again. On top of all of this, each level has three challenge rooms hidden away for you to discover and conquer. These are some of the most difficult challenges of the game, each one forcing you to complete a small section in very specific ways. Some will have you not get hit or get spotted, some will have you simply survive waves of enemies and not die, others challenge you to make it to the end in a certain amount of time while dodging crazy obstacles. These rooms, while difficult, force you to really learn and use each power's abilities to their fullest. And at the end of each challenge, you collect a coin that can be exchanged to enhance your powers further in the map. Speaking of, this is where things get a little different. Instead of just picking a boss and fighting your way through that stage, Smelter has an overworld map where instead of playing as Eve, you fly around a Smelter himself, conquering the land and building up your army, a la tower defense style gameplay. You'll fly a Smelter into each region, shooting little orbs of power with the right analog stick like in Twin Shooters, and you collect resources to build houses and defenses for your armies, the people called the Zerm. As you get closer to each new stage, your commander will let you know of some sort of obstacle blocking you from entering that stage, and you need the Zerm's help to overcome it. Enemies will continually spawn in waves from these stages and spread out to destroy everything you have built. 
You have access to ground-based sword type units and aerial fighting archers that you can place by building their respective towers. Each tower then needs to be manned by Zerms, so you'll have to make sure you have enough Zerms ready to man these towers. Each unit needs to have a place to sleep and enough food to sustain them, so you'll quickly get into a groove of resource management, building apple farms and houses in safer, more protected areas, and barracks and archer towers closer to the enemies and objectives. These early battles are fairly easy and just require you to place enough towers near the enemies to complete the objectives. But further you branch out, these encounters can become really tough and frantic with enemies spawning so fast that if you don't have your defenses set up correctly, you'll lose a lot of progress and you'll have to build it up again. There's also an added element system where one element is more powerful against the others and you can collect special rocks or crystals in each platforming stage called Moxie that you can use to make your troops use those type of attacks. This switch between action to the top down effect does slow down the action of the game a fair bit and while interesting and different, some of the mechanics and nuances are not explained well and can be a little frustrating when you just want to jump back into the platforming action. The soundtrack in this game will immediately take you back to the 90s. Filled with classic sounding electronic beats, each track is uplifting and will have you pumped and ready to go. Each area has its own distinct and different sound, and I loved each and every track. There's no audible dialogue, which would have been a nice addition as some of the story is pretty witty and interesting, but the sound effects do well and match the tone and charm of the game overall. Smelter stays true to the 16-bit feel with its beautifully handcrafted designs. There's a certain charm to the pixel look of it all. Each region in the game looks unique and has more than just palette swaps with different enemy types, different obstacles, and the little details in each section look different as well. The top-down overworld carries the same style and looks great, making it easy to identify the different regions and structures placed throughout. You're introduced to the game through a really well animated cutscene that sadly is not carried out throughout the rest of the game. All other dialogues and interactions are represented with basic text and 2D character pictures, which would have been nice if they were a little higher quality. Smelter does include a platinum trophy that for the most part is not too difficult to achieve. You do need to collect all the items in the game, which means beating each challenge room, and that is probably the most difficult part. The only other tricky trophies were some of the ones that are just not explained well. For instance, there's one trophy for maxing out Eve's HP. At one point early in the game, it's mentioned Eve's total HP is related to the number of Zerm troops you have, but besides that, not much is known. So it took a while to figure out for every 70 Zerm troops you have, Eve gets an extra 20% HP boost. Meaning, to unlock this, you'll need to have 350 Zerm troops total. Overall, nothing really felt grindy about the trophies, so I had a lot of fun collecting them and was able to get the Platinum in a little under 20 hours. Smelter really was a nice surprise for me. I didn't know what I was getting into when I started playing it, and I had no idea that I would love it as much as I did. I've mentioned before that Mega Man X is one of my favorite games, and it's one that I've gone back to every couple of years to play again and again. Smelter manages to bring back a lot of that nostalgia, feeling very similar to them in a good way. Think of playing as Zero in Mega Man X3, but it's still different enough to stand out on its own. I give Smelter a rating of 8 out of 10. Its 2D platforming is familiar and responsive while still being fresh and different. The top-down tower defense idea is interesting and adds a new dimension to the game. While I think the game would have been fine without those sections, it does add some more gameplay and thankfully does not take too much of the time or spotlight for too long. The story is silly and has its funny moments and does have a fairly satisfying ending. If you're a fan of 90s style action platformers, I really think you'll enjoy this game. Smelter is currently available on PS4, Switch, Xbox, and PC. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, happy gaming.